Hey everyone, Madrybred here. Pokemon Gold with only one Hoppip was a brutal run. Let's follow that up with an even more brutal one. Today's the day we figure out, would I be able to beat Pokemon Red with a team of only first form bug Pokemon? Okay, um, do I even need to explain why this run is gonna be hard? Here, take a look at Caterpie's stats. Yeah, that's probably the lowest stats I've ever put on this screen. Actually, that's not true. I think Sunkern has slightly lower stats. That said, Sunkern learned a few moves. Caterpie has Tackle and String Shot. That's alright, we get Weedle too. What are its stats? Oh. Yeah, that's not any better, is it? Base stat total of 195. That's 50 lower than even Rattata. It's even slightly lower than Magikarp's stats overall. That's a hundred lower than first form starters. In fact, every single first form bug in the game has lower base stats than the first form starters until we get to the single form bug types like Scyther and Pinsir, and Pinsir's not even in this game. That was an exclusive to Blue. This is gonna be awful. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I bet I can win by the end, but the whole first half of the challenge is going to be brutally slow. Even then, I'm probably only going to win because Scyther is good, and we can get that later in the run. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use first form bug Pokémon. I'll need other Pokémon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokémon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokéballs and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoy the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. So right off the bat, I used the Universal Pokémon Randomizer to replace Bulbasaur with Caterpie so that we can do the whole run with it. I picked to replace Bulbasaur so that our rival would have Charizard, probably the hardest for us to fight. This is gonna be brutal, isn't it? Alright, so you probably have an idea of how the start of this run is gonna go, and it's not good. First, I grind before the forest on super low-leveled Pidgeys and Rutta. Pidgey starts with Gust in this game, but Gust was normal type at the time. See, we would normally have to go to the forest to grind, but in Gen 1, poison is actually super effective against Bug, so Weedles would really mess us up at this low of a level. We have to run back to our house to heal after just about every fight, and we still sometimes don't win, but at least it gets us our first few levels. What I did notice though is sometimes Pidgey would hit us for 5 damage, then he'd crit us for 5 damage right after. I don't think I've ever seen a critical hit do the same amount of damage as a regular hit before, but this is Gen 1 so it's probably some kind of obscure problem or glitch that I don't know about. If any of you guys know what happened, then let me know in the comments because I'm pretty curious. Twitter seems to think it has to do with just how low a level the Pokémon we're fighting are, since apparently low-leveled Pokémon have less of a damage buff on their crits. I honestly never knew about that, it seems to just be a Gen 1 thing, but basically the theory is that the 5 damage is a high damage roll for their regular attack, and 5 damage is also a low damage roll for their crit. This probably couldn't happen if they were anything more than, I don't know, level 5. Anyway, right after is the next horrible step though, the forest. I could catch a Weedle, but I didn't even bother. I don't think I'd use it anywhere in the entire challenge run. See, you might remember this from a long time ago when I used Beedrill against Brock's Rock Gym, but in Gen 1, when a move does so little damage that it would be zero, instead of rounding up to one damage, it might just say the move missed. Well, Poison Sting is a 15 power move, and both of Brock's Pokémon quad resist poison. Not only that, but Brock infamously has 5 full heals per Pokémon, so it's incredibly hard to get Poison to stick to actually wear them down that way. It would make more sense if I just grinded up a Caterpie until Tackle can take them down, since at least Tackle is stronger and only single resisted. But I mean, just because that strategy would be easier, doesn't make it easy. Caterpie has a base attack of 30, so I'm expecting to do 1 damage per attack until... I don't know, level 15? Maybe level 20? Point being, I don't see this fight being possible for a long, long time. Remember that poison only moves run I did in Emerald? That incredibly brutal one where I was using poison sting on Geodudes until like level 38? 
we might have another one of those kinds of runs on our hands here. Hard to say, Brock is generally easier than Roxanne, and in Gen 1 crits are more common, but like I was saying before, low-leveled Pokémon don't have as strong of crits. Anyway, that poison challenge took so long that the video was an entire week late. Let's hope this one isn't. None of you want to sit here and watch us grind, let's fast forward to when I hit level 15 and just give the fight a few tries to see how we match up. I mean, we couldn't possibly win at level 15, but maybe we'll do more damage than I thought. First try at the Rock Gym. I'm pretty sure the first attack before Defense Curl only did one damage, so that's not good. Geodude actually gave us tons of chances to attack him because he just used Defense Curl way more than I expected, but we still hardly did any damage. He lost maybe a quarter of his health total. I'm already starting to think that we won't win this fight below level 30, maybe? So, more grinding. I know some of you are probably wondering if maybe catching a bunch of Caterpies would help rather than just using one, and I did consider it, but I don't think it would help. You see, when you level up your Pokémon, you don't just do more damage based on your attack stat. The level itself gives you some damage output. Yeah, your level is part of damage calculations of your attacks, not just your stats against their stats. Weird, right? Anyway, because of that, overleveling is our only hope to do more than one damage per attack. If I spent an hour finding and catching a bunch of Caterpies, and getting them all to roughly level 10 or so, we'd still probably just lose to Geodude. Plus, it would take far longer since leveling multiple Pokémon takes way longer than just leveling one Pokémon extra, and Caterpie is pretty rare in Pokémon Red anyway, so it would take a long time to catch those. If I took all of the time that it would take to catch and train 10 Caterpies to level 10, and spent that time instead on leveling one Caterpie, then we'd come away with a Caterpie that could actually take a few hits and deal more than one damage. Realistically, we're probably going to need crits to win, and a crit from a level 30 Caterpie is far better than crits from a bunch of level 10 Caterpies. That said, even with training one Caterpie being faster, it still takes ages. This is with me using speed up, mind you. You don't see it in the footage because it looks super weird and ugly, so I don't really bother showing it. Just thought I'd mention speed up again since it's been a few months since I brought it up, and a lot of you guys seem to be under the impression that I don't use any speed up still. I didn't use speed up for well over a year, but I do nowadays since you guys told me to for like. <laughs> Years? Since the beginning, I think literally since my beginning runs, you guys have all been saying, just use speed up. The only problem is that speeding up the game so that it runs three times faster doesn't actually make the grind three times shorter. It would only make the grind three times shorter if you could still control the game perfectly at three times speed, and that's literally impossible. So speed up helps, but probably not as much as you would think. Anyway, I'm rambling, let's try the gym again. More tries, this time at level 20. So we seem to do 2 damage at the start, and I think we even did 2 damage after the first defense curl, but after the second one we were clearly only dealing 1 damage again. We were only taking 5 damage per hit, but obviously we can't take as many hits as them. In the end, we managed to take Geodude out mostly thanks to crits and his own bad move choice, but against Onyx, it wasn't even close. We were only dealing one damage, and we were running super low on power points. Eventually, he just tackled us enough for us to finally go down. You guys don't need to see any more of this ridiculous grind, right? You already know how slow it is? Alright, I'm gonna spare you any more of this grinding footage for this gym. We'll be back at level 25. Okay, more Rock Gym! Page 3 of the script and we're still on Rock Gym! Now, this one took many tries. We were doing a lot more damage to Geodude, and our crits did decent damage, but it still took quite a while before Geodude went down. This time against Onyx, we were dealing a little bit more damage and had a little bit more power points left over, so I thought that we'd stand a chance. As Onyx started spamming Screech to lower our defense, I got really worried, but then he started using Screech over and over, even after we had our defense fully lowered. He just kept using it for some reason. Because of that, we actually ended up winning the fight with a few power points to spare. That fight was insane, and I'm so happy to be past it. So the next little bit of travel was actually really easy. See, we're so overleveled that we can one-shot a lot of the trainer's Pokémon in this next route. 
Mind you, that doesn't mean we're in for an easy time. I'm probably going to be replacing Caterpie really soon since it's nearly useless overall, and we'll never get any better moves on it than it already has. Considering that our rival is coming up and we probably can't beat him with this Caterpie, this is the only route of the whole game where he's going to be strong enough to be getting one-shots. In Mount Moon, I started hunting for a Paris as soon as I got in there. It's a really frail Pokémon, but I mean, it's a million times better than Caterpie. It's stronger than Caterpie in every single stat other than speed. In fact, Paris can potentially be really useful if massively overleveled. You see, it's got an amazing move called Spore, a 100% accurate sleep move. Considering sleep is extra strong in Gen 1, that's a really powerful move. The problem is that Paris has terrible speed, so it rarely acts first. That's an issue, both because we can't easily put people to sleep to start the fight, and because we're giving most of our opponents a free hit on us right at the start. Plus, Paris has a lot of brutal weaknesses. It's quad weak to fire, quad weak to flying, and even quad weak to poison. Remember earlier when I said that in Gen 1, poison is good against bug? Well, since we're both grass and bug type, that makes us quad weak to poison. Paris is a big upgrade, but it's still super easy to get one shot if they have the right type of move. Let's try and level this thing while we're here, because next is the rival who will probably be a brick wall for ages, and I really don't want to grind west of Celadon by fighting sparrows with Peck. On our way through though, I took the Helix Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. So right away we have to deal with Pidgeotto. Naturally, it's faster, but Paralysis does an amazing job of slowing it down and getting us to take less hits. We still lost about half of our health, though. Abra can't fight back, though, so I took that chance to heal back up a bit by taking it down with Leech Life. For Rattata, I just sent in Caterpie and easily overpowered them. Man, that's a sentence I just didn't think I'd be saying today. Last was Charmander, and I was petrified of being one-shot by Ember, but he just used Growl, so we got to paralyze him and spam Scratch until he went down. He only got one more chance to attack us, and he used Growl again, so that loss was 100% his fault. I gotta say, that rifle fight went so much better than I was expecting. We're still not in the clear yet, though. We still have lots of trainers to fight, and thanks to Paris being pretty slow, we do get hit first pretty commonly. Plus, Spearow is a really common Pokémon here, and they have Peck, a move that's quad effective against our Paris. We can beat most trainers first try, but we also have to heal pretty often. I'm just hoping that Paris will be strong enough to carry us through the Water Gym and Rock Tunnel, since that's when we can get some new Pokémon. I made sure to teach Dig to Paris the moment we got the TM, by the way. It's one of the only moves that we can learn that hits ghosts before the Pokémon Tower, so I know that I'll need this later. While I was in town, I hit up the Water Gym. Staryu was super easy since even his critical tackles did just about nothing. Starmie went much better than expected though. On the first turn, she just used an X Defend, so I paralyzed her with Stun Spore and started using Leech Life to try and stay healthy. It didn't do much damage, but thanks to her being fully paralyzed so often, we didn't take much damage. This fight probably would have been easy regardless of paralysis though, since her water moves wouldn't have done much to us. Next up is the SSN, and I take the chance to try and level up Paris as much as I could. See, he needs to be strong enough to get us through Rock Tunnel, and there's some hikers in there with Pokémon who tend to blow up, so I have to be prepared. I figured that Dig might be enough to get us a win in there, but it's hard to say for sure. We're pretty slow, so I could see them just blowing up right away to one-shot us. While I'm on the SSN, I picked up the TM for Body Slam, and weirdly enough, Paris can learn it. In fact, Paris is the only Pokémon we'll be getting in this video who can learn it, so I replaced Scratch right away. I think this should be enough to win the rival fight in here. Let's go give it a try. Rival time. First was Pidgeotto, who really couldn't hurt us very much, so it went down fine. Raticate right after was a one-shot, but he got us with Tail Whip first, so for Kadabra, I switched out to Caterpie. Now, he managed to get us with Disable, but in Gen 1, it just disabled a random move, and it picked String Shot, so we still easily took him down. It's gotta feel awful having your Kadabra go down to Caterpie. Last was Charmeleon, and although his Ember did pretty good damage, we have Spore now. It's an awesome 100% accurate sleep move, so we don't have to worry about missing, but we're still pretty slow. 
We took him out, but that trick might not work by the next rival fight. I should have a better Pokemon by then, though. While we're still in town, I decided to give the Electric Gym a try. Voltorb and Pikachu were both super easy, but I know Raichu might be hard, so I came in with a strategy. I switched to Caterpie and spammed String Shot until we went down. He got an X-Speed in, but he still lost more than he gained, so by the time Paris came out, we were faster and could just hit Spore. And we had to hit it three times, because the first two he just woke up on the same turn. Just Gen 1 things. It's fine, Sleep was totally overpowered in Gen 1, you didn't get to attack on the turn you woke up. It was brutal. Third time's the charm, and he stayed asleep so we could just hit Dig for the win. Next up is Rock Tunnel. It's like I went over earlier, there's a required hiker fight in here that tends to blow up, so Dig has to carry us through that fight. It's possible they'll just miss while we're underground, but it's also possible that we're slower and they blow us up before we get a chance to attack. It's just one of those fights that might take a few tries. Now that we're properly fully into summer, there's some new arrivals to check out, like this layered kangaroo pocket sweatshirt, great for protecting your baby kangaroo that you stole. I know about that. There's also the quarter zip sweatshirt, and do you see why I pretty much stopped taking my own pictures and started using their website's pictures? I mean, look at this guy, I can't compete. If you want to look as good as this guy, then you're gonna have to dress as well as him too. And you can! Thanks to Chimera, linked in the description. Make sure to use the code MADRYBREAD at checkout to get a discount, and let them know that I sent you. Now, I need to go get ready for the ghost gym. The hiker ended up going really well, by the way. The extra levels got us faster than his whole team, and although he did survive a dig with his Graveler, he only used Tackle, so we were fine. I'm pretty sure they just pick random moves anyway. Now, the moment we got to Celadon, I started working the slot machines. It sucks, and it takes forever even with turbo buttons, but it's absolutely worth it. See, we can buy a Scyther here, by far the strongest Pokémon we're gonna have the entire run. You can catch one in the Safari Zone, but that takes forever, and we can't even reach there yet. So if I just buy one now, then I can level it up in the Rocket Hideout. Critical hits are based on your base speed in this game, and Scyther is pretty fast, so between that and the move Slash critting more often, we should be able to reliably crit on a regular basis. It's a bit of a one-trick pony though, as outside of Swords Dance and Slash being amazing, we have literally no type coverage. Scyther can only learn normal type attacks, since it wasn't till Yellow that he learned Wing Attack. Not that it matters that much, considering just how weak Wing Attack is in Gen 1, although I guess it would still hit Ghosts. Still, Slash and Swords Dance is a pretty strong combo. We just need to level him up until he knows both moves. Plus, would you look how cool that sprite is? I decided to give the Grass Gym a go right away. First, I used Scyther to deal with Victory Bell, but it didn't really go that well. We got poisoned early and stuck in Wrap for quite a while. We did alright damage when we'd crit, but we were in red health by the time that he went down, so we had to switch for Paris to deal with Tangela. Quickly, we ran into an issue where we kept getting stuck in Bind, and we were slower than him, so he could just keep doing it. So I started switching Pokémon to get out of it. <laughs> yeah, in Gen 1, you could switch during Bind for some reason. After switching back and forth a little bit, I ended up having Caterpie use String Shot to lower Tangela's speed so that it wouldn't be faster than Paris anymore, so that I could just hit it with Spore and finish it off. That took forever. Last was Vileplume, but I just ended up using the same strategy as String Shot before Spore to take it down. Who'd have thought that String Shot from Caterpie would end up coming in clutch like that? Well, Scyther didn't do that well. I guess that's to be expected though, it's not like we had any decent moves yet. It sucks that we'll never have the same type attack bonus, so it's not like Quick Attack will do very much, but it learns Slash pretty soon, so we should have it by the next major fight. I just went ahead and fought every trainer in the Rocket Hideout to get some experience before Giovanni. Speaking of! First is his Onyx, so I started by using Dig with Paris. We were slower, so we got hit by a critical rock throw, but Onyx has terrible attack, so we were fine. We couldn't quite one-shot him, but his second rock throw missed, so we easily finished him off with Body Slam. Rhyhorn was a one-shot with Dig, and last was Kangaskhan, who went down in a couple hits of Slash. Well, that was easy. Let's go try the Pokemon Tower rival fight and see how we match up. Alright, I know this is usually the easiest rival fight, but this time we literally just swept the entire team with Slash. Ah, that went perfect. Let's go get ourselves a new Pokemon. 
Now that we have access to the southern bits of the map, I went ahead and caught Venonat right away. It's not a very strong Pokemon, and it's not even that good with most of its moves, but it still learns Psychic, and we might need that to fight the ghost types later in the game. One of the Elite Four members is Agatha, and having both Dig and Psychic is probably going to be required to win that fight. So, the Poison Gym fight actually exposes an issue with my strategy that I totally forgot about. In Generation 1, critical hits ignore all stat changes. Yes, even our own positive stat changes. That means that even though I used a ton of Sword Stance to power up our attack, the constant critical hits mean Slash was doing the same damage as without them. Because of that, I had to switch to Quick Attack. Well, it was doing more damage than Critical Slash, but that's only after three Swords Dances. We ended up winning, but it was super close, and it could have gone the other way if we didn't miss so much. I think I'm gonna have to replace Quick Attack with Swift. It's not that strong, but at least it's stronger than Quick Attack. So, next up is Silphco. Yeah, we could go do Cinnabar Island early, but we're using all bugs, so I don't really think we could pull it off quite yet. That said, I am skeptical about our chances at the rival here too. This is the usually brutal fifth rival fight, and it'll be the first one where he has a Charizard. I figure that if I have sword stands built up before we get to Charizard, then maybe it'll go okay, but it also wouldn't surprise me if I need another Pokemon to help me win. I'd love to just put him to sleep with Paris, but he's super slow and double weak to fire, so I just don't see that happening. I'm still willing to give it a try, though. What would you look at that? The Swords Dance and Swift combo paid off. I mean, it almost didn't. We crit against Pidgeot near the start to deal less damage than without it, and that led to us getting hit by so many wing attacks that we almost fainted. You know what feels real weird? Hoping not to get a critical hit. Seriously, if I had crit even once beyond the Pidgeot part of the fight, I'd probably have been knocked out and had to resort to using Paris against Charizard. There's no way we could have won if that happened. Time for Giovanni. Nidorino was super easy with Slash and Swift, and second was Kangaskhan, who was just a two-shot with Slash. For Rhyhorn, I used Dig with Paris, but Rhyhorn is actually slower than us, so I guess I could have used Spore if I wanted. It didn't matter, Horn Attack didn't do much. Last was Nidoqueen, so I just had Scyther slash a bit for the win. It took three hits, but we were never in any real danger. Now, the Psychic Gym ended up being super easy, as I kind of expected. This is one of those gyms that can occasionally be a big threat, but in runs where we have a fast and hard-hitting physical attacker, it's really not a problem. They're just too frail to handle us. Alakazam didn't get one shot, but he also only used Recover, so it worked out just fine. Bet you didn't expect to see this place right now. Well, I'm in the process of leveling up Venonat a little bit. I really doubt I'm gonna use it in the upcoming Fire Gym, and honestly, I'm probably gonna hardly use Venonat the whole run since it's just really weak, but we need to level it up at some point. It's like I was saying before, I think it'll be just about required for the Agatha fight, and it's honestly not that far off, so I may as well get it done early. I decided that Pokemon Tower was a solid enough place to start the grinding, since it's just a bunch of easy-to-take-down Poison-type Ghastlies. I mean, they should be easy to take down, but even after getting Psychic from a TM, Venonat is terrible with it. I should probably do a Venonat-only run at some point. Wait, have I done a Venonat run? I don't think I have, but it feels familiar. Maybe I just used a Venonat when I was a kid or something. Well, I'm not going to look it up, because that way you guys will all have to tell me if I've used one in a run before, and of course, comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Fire Gym time! Now this one was amazing. First for Growlithe, I used Swords Dance twice to build up some power while losing half of our health in the process, then I hit Swift for a knockout. Ponyta was also a one-shot, but against Rapidash, we crit to deal less damage, letting it survive. We lucked out though, and their Fire Spin missed, so we still got the knockout. Now, Swift didn't actually one-shot Arcanine, but despite having Fire Blast that clearly would have made us faint, he used Ember instead, so we landed in red health and finished him off. Well, it was dumb, but it wasn't Super Potion on a full health Pokémon dumb. Time for the Ground Gym. Rhyhorn was obviously easy with some hits of Dig and Spore, but I actually had to Slash and Body Slam a bit to soften him up, and it still ended up taking more digs than I expected. Paris is pretty weak still. For Dugtrio, we just landed a one-shot with Slash, and Nidoqueen only got us with some poison stings that really didn't do much before she went down too. 
Nidoking didn't do any better, so it's just already on to Rhydon, who I finished the same way as Rhyhorn for an easy fight. We took some damage, but Scyther could have finished it if I really needed him to. Time for the second from last rival fight. Right away, we took down Pidgeot, but not before losing quite a bit of health to Wing Attack. That's not good. I want Scyther healthy for the Charizard fight. Rhyhorn went the same as he usually does, with Spore and Dig sealing his fate. Execute could have been an issue with his Poison Powder, but he missed so we landed a two-shot. Next up was Water Onyx, and although we did pretty good damage, his bite hurt us so we were down to two-thirds of our health. Alakazam was almost a one-shot, but he hit us with Psychic to bring us to only four health before we finished him. That basically sealed our fate, since Charizard easily outsped and swept our whole team other than Scyther, who was faster than him but couldn't one-shot him so we just lost. We were close, but Charizard is too strong. Alright, with that failed run I have to grind more. I leveled up Scyther a bit, but mostly I tried to help Paris and Venonat catch up since they've got potential to be useful, but are just too weak at the moment. It's a rough situation that we find ourselves in, because Charizard is both very fast and hits very hard. Plus, there's only two rival fights left, and they're both programmed to always use super effective moves, so we can't just bait him into using something useless like Rage. He'll never use it since all of our bug types are weak to fire. Flamethrower doesn't miss, and there's no way we're getting Paris to a high enough level that he'd be faster than Charizard, considering Charizard is fast and Paris is extremely slow. I just don't see Paris surviving a flamethrower to be able to hit Spore, so that's out of the question. Plus, Venonat does basically no damage with Psychic unless his target is weak to it or half his level. He might just be good for Stun Spore and Sleep Powder at this point. Honestly, I might need to just keep trying the fight until Scyther has enough health to survive a flamethrower, but I'm not sure how many levels that's gonna be. Let's give it a few more tries. Even after gaining tons of levels on the lower leveled Pokemon though, things went mostly fine until Charizard who just sweeps us. We don't have any good chances to build up Sword Stance on anything but maybe Rhyhorn. Maybe I could try that? Alright, so three tries later and I managed to get a few Swords Dances in against Rhyhorn. We lost some defense in the process, but we were able to sweep the rest of his team with the extra damage. I mean, other than when we crit Swift to do less damage. That's still so weird to me. It's funny, the high crit rate means our Slash basically always crits, but it also means we might accidentally crit with Swift to deal less damage in the only situation we'd use Swift in. I don't really have a good feeling about the Pokemon Champion fight. We're in the last stretch, before the Elite Four, and I've gotta say, I am not feeling great about our chances. We don't have any special attacks, so Lorelei's Cloister is gonna be a problem. We have to take out Agatha's team with our support Pokémon that are nearly useless. And the Pokémon Champion has a Charizard that could no doubt one-shot our whole team, and probably outspeed all of them but Scyther. I get the feeling that the Elite Four is just gonna be a whole lot of Swords Dance and luck. I mean, until Agatha when we hit that brick wall. Her ghosts are pretty fast, so I don't see Spore working out great, but Paris with Dig might actually be our best attack, so we just have to hope she does dumb things like using Dream Eater while we're awake. And honestly, that's not out of the question. She loves doing that. Now that we're at the Elite Four, let's take a look at our team. Yeah, these levels are too low. I'm gonna level up our guys just a little bit more, but it's actually really time-consuming to level Venonat and Paris, so it probably won't be many extra levels. They need to be strong enough for Agatha's Gengars, though. I think her highest level Gengar is level 60, so I should at least try and get Paris and Venonat close to that. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Ice Trainer Lorelei. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Aurora Beam really messed us up due to being part flying type. We took down Dugong, but just hardly. Well, the rest of the team can't take down Cloyster for sure, so I'll just come back with a few more levels. Alright, new strategy. After failing a bunch of tries a few levels higher, we'd got this one where Paris was able to survive Aurora Beam, and we put Dugong to sleep for just long enough that we could switch to Scyther and get three swords dances and take him out. Maybe we stand a chance now. Cloyster wasn't quite a one-shot, but she just illegally used a Super Potion as the second move in a round, so we didn't get hit. Slowbro also survived, but at least he only hit Water Gun, and Jinx was of course a one-shot. Last was Lapras, who also didn't go down in one hit, before messing us up really bad with Blizzard. Our next hit got the knockout, but I'm really not feeling confident about the upcoming fights. If it was that hard to win that fight, how bad is Agatha gonna be? Second is Fighting Trainer Bruno. 
First was Onyx, so I put it to sleep and switched to Scyther to build up our attack. It took a while due to X defend, but it went alright. Hitmonchan was a one-shot, as was Hitmonlee right after. The second Onyx was a bit of a problem due to our weak crits and it hitting Rock Throw, but he's so weak that we hardly took damage despite being quad weak to Rock moves. Last was Machamp, who we crit, so we didn't get the one-shot, but he wasted time with Fissure, so we just won anyway. On to the hard part. Third is Ghost Trainer Agatha. The first Gengar went great as she just used Dream Eater while we were awake, so we easily used Spore and took her down from two hits of Dig. Good start! Golbat just missed Supersonic, so Scyther got a two-shot pretty easily, and next was Haunter. We got confused, but we actually never hit ourselves, so one Dig did the trick. Against Arbok, we ended up getting critically hit by Acid, so our Scyther got pretty banged up there before we knocked it out. Last was her level 60 Gengar, and despite our Paris being a whole 10 levels lower than her, it went fine. We got hit by Toxic, but that just let us use Spore and dig twice for the knockout. I honestly can't believe how well that went. I thought this would be a brick wall. I'm so thankful that Gen 1 dig has 100 power, it really saved us. I guess I leveled up that Venonat for nothing. <laughs> I spent hours on that, total waste of my time. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Lance. First is Water Onyx, so I just had Paris tank a Dragon Rage and put him to sleep so I could switch to Scyther to build up Swords Dance and finish him off. It took a few tries thanks to him sometimes waking up early and just critting us with Hydro Pump, but after a few we took him out with Swift. Next up was two Dragonairs who we just one-shot with Swift, then we had to deal with Aerodactyl. Even with our buffs we couldn't one-shot him, but he couldn't do much to us either so it was okay. Against Dragonite, though, we crit our Swift to deal less damage, so we took a Hyper Beam. Our second Swift crit as well, so he was still up, but he had to recharge from his Hyper Beam, so we got another hit after that for the win. Finally, the Pokemon Champion. Right away, Pidgeot outsped us, failed Mirror Move, then got hit by Spore. Literally, why would he do that? Whatever, we just spammed Swords Dance and took him out. We only got hit by Weak Wing Attack. Alakazam was a one-shot with Swift, but Rhydon, right after, hardly took anything due to Swift critting. Actually, our non-critical ones hardly did anything to him as well, but he also hardly did anything to us. His Fury attack took out a decent chunk, but he still fainted long before we were in danger. Executor was a one-shot with Swift, as well as Water Onyx right after. Last was Charizard, so I was just hoping we wouldn't crit, but we didn't, so we got the one-shot. Believe it or not, that was the first try on the Pokemon Champion. We really lucked out on not critting more. I know that sounds dumb, but Scyther crits a lot in Gen 1. That was honestly a really fun run. Obviously the start of it was horrible, but we got to use some unique strategies and moves in that run. Critical hits not getting the buff from Sword Stance did add a little bit of frustration and luck to the fights, but at the same time it kept me on my toes and made sure that we couldn't just take out everything with Scyther alone. It's kind of funny, I'm pretty sure every slash we did the entire run was a critical hit. Doesn't it have something crazy like a 97% crit chance in Gen 1 when used on a Pokemon who's this fast? It's something like that. Anyway, I really hope you guys like that run. The next challenge should be up next week on Saturday like usual, and I'm doing another Oblivion run. I'm thinking I'm gonna do Oblivion with only Restoration magic, because Restoration has so many fun spells. I'm gonna absolutely break the game in that run, and I'm pumped to do it. I don't think it'll be terribly hard, but oh man, we're gonna have some fun with that one. Don't worry, there'll be another Pokemon challenge the week after that, like usual. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. Outro time, uh, I'm actually just about to go make some lunch, and then I'm thinking I'm gonna start on that Oblivion run. I've already done a little bit of research for it, just trying to figure out, like, you know, how I want to build my character in the beginning and everything. And I'm so excited for it, because all of the Fortify skill and Fortify attribute and all of those things, uh, those are restoration skills. So that means that I can buff all of my stats to ridiculous game-breaking degrees, like I could make a spell that doubles my athletics and my speed and my acrobatics, so that I can run at light speed and jump over buildings and jump out of bounds in cities and stuff. We also get all of the drain spells, so I could make a spell that, like, drains a hundred athletics from people and a hundred speed from people and see if they can even walk anymore. 
I can do all kinds of crazy things, and I'm really looking forward to messing around with that. Also, just as a little bonus for those very few of you who listen to the very end of these videos, um, you may have noticed in the comments section of the last few challenges that there's quite a few comments that seem like they've already watched these challenges before they've, you know, officially gone up. That's because they have. I've been experimenting with this and it's been really fun lately. I've been just unlisting my video so that it's not public, but it's still viewable. And I've been linking it on Twitter multiple days early for a bunch of these challenges over the last month or so. So the, I don't know, usually about 800 people from Twitter will end up seeing it early from that. I could have said this at the beginning of the video, I guess, but I kind of like the idea that that's just a little secret for those of you who actually decide to follow me on Twitter or that watch to the end of these videos, you know, instead of being the broad audience who might skip around in it and not watch these little bits, it's instead a little more intimate talking to my core audience of those of you who want to listen to me ramble in the outros and want to follow me on Twitter and, and all of that stuff. It's been really fun. Uh, I, I think it's probably bad for me in the algorithm that I do with that, uh, but I don't really care. It's a fun time, and it seems like people have a fun time on Twitter with it, so I think I'm just gonna keep doing it. So, you know, check out my Twitter. I, I say follow me on Twitter, but, like, you don't even need to have a Twitter account. You don't even need to follow me on Twitter. Just know that if you go to my Twitter, the link will be over there to watch the challenges early, if I've already got it edited and uploaded and all of that good stuff. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.